alveolata alveolata is a very important group of this uh, chrome alveolates as we know uh, chromista and alveolates isn't it so what this alveolates are all about so members of the clade alveolata have got membrane bounded sacs the alveoli just like our uh, the lungs you know the air uh, sacs so small microscopic sacs are known as alveoli so just under the plasma membrane this alveoli you can see it so dinoflagellate apicomplex and ciliates all have got this sort of alveoli this is a, a transmission electron microscope picture you can see that air filled sacs that enable them uh, to float you know they are actually uh, the planktonic right so it can actually air filled uh, sacs increases the buoyancy enables them to float in the surface of water so ciliate is an, a, a very important member of alveolates so member of the phylum ciliophora use cilia to move and feed so it's for locomotion as also also for the feeding like pseudopodia ciliates have a large polyploid macronuclei polyploid you see it's a set of the entire genome duplicates or triplicate right so that is called polyploid so that is that is a main genome is a macronuclei and it also have got small diploid micronuclei so it has got two kinds of genome right uh, uh, small diploid micronuclei which is mainly for sexual uh, you know sexual exchange while the other one the main vegetative uh, um, genome is the macronuclei which is a larger one right so small micronuclei is for germ line for conjugation you see conjugation is of, uh, usually found in uh, bacteria but it's also found in ciliates very exciting isn't it so ciliates uh, one example would be paramecium are structurally pretty complex you know all ciliates have kinetic system made up of cilia kinetosomes and other fibrils right it has got this microtubules have been arranged into a kinetic system uh, uh, that makes uh, you know that, that, that is the reason why it has got kinetosomes and other fibril system that we will see it so many have got structures that can be expelled such as trichocyst or toxicist so you know it's like an arrow it can expel it very in interesting it's a defensive function you can see it here expelled trichocyst you see so this these are the unexpelled trichocyst but when it expels it looks like an arrow you know so uh, uh, it's defensive in function right independently evolved paramecium is an example of alveoli alveolates so you can see that it, it's a ciliate it has got cilia contractile vacuole and it has got a primitive mouth and anus you see it's a oral groove vestibulum with buccal overture you know and cytostom cytostom is basically the cell mouth and it also has got anal pore cytoproct you know the rectum it's just one cell organism with the mouth and uh, a rectum see it's very interesting isn't it paramecium so this is another very interesting organism we have already covered this organism in uh, one of our earlier lecture misodinium rubrum remember it, it's a very bizarre uh, you know ciliate so this this animal can eat the plant that is green and red algae and the algal chloroplast gets integrated into the cell wall it, it's not simply digesting the chloroplast but instead it steals it so it becomes a kleptoplast you know so it gets integrated into the eukaryotic cell where it carries out the photosynthesis so there is a very very bizarre uh, kind of organism mesodinium rubrum you know so other example is dinoflagellate very very important ecologically important organism dinoflagellates so dinoflagellata is the phylum uh, the diverse group of aquatic photo autotroph and heterotroph you know abundant in both marine and freshwater phytoplankton so if you take out a uh, surface water chances are high that you will see uh, lots of dinoflagellate the spinning uh, little uh, cells you know under a light microscope you can see the cells which are spinning like a top they are basically the dinoflagellate with two flagella as the name say dinoflagellate two flagella right gymnodinium goniolax serratium noctucula syndesens you know all these are examples so noctucula uh, by the way is uh, bioluminescent most of the noctucula species are bioluminescent so you can see bioluminescent blooms you know in the coastal cities if you have ever taken a coastal voyage you can see it 
so uh, each has got a characteristic shape that in many species is reinforced by internal plates of the cellulose you know so that is where the shape morpho taxonomy is a very important attribute for defining species so you can see that in dinoflagellate as well as in diatom so many species uh, based you know the species defined based on the morphology so it might not be valid too if you take the uh, the, the DNA sequence and compare you will see that a large number of morpho taxonomy uh, species descriptions are invalid same thing with the dinoflagellate as well so it has got two flagella that make them spin as they move through the water so it, it you know it looks like spinning so of course it spins you know like a top so that is how so this is a generalized picture of a dinoflagellate uh, cell structure with an apical horn the apex and transverse flagellum and uh, longitudinal flagellum so there are two kinds of flagellum one is transverse that actually uh, surrounds the cell while the longitudinal flagellum is the one responsible for the motion so its movement is really interesting dinoflagellate under the microscope search in the youtube you can see a large number of videos it also has got sulcus cingulum uh, such are so many other organelles that we will cover when we uh, learn more about the dinoflagellate right so uh, dinoflagellate is really important because some of the members are uh, uh, ecologically important as causative agent of the hazardous algal blooms or harmful algal bloom like carinia and nocticula you know so it causes something called red tides so the tide itself becomes red in color you know which can be toxic to human beings especially for carinia because carinia brevis causes uh, i mean it, it it has got brevitoxin it releases brevitoxin which integrated into the shellfish so if you eat the shellfish from those region affected with the uh, carinia uh, red tide then you, it might be you know injurious to the human um, uh, you know it has got health hazard as well you know so nect nocticular bloom as well as the carinia blooms are really really important so <clears throat> dilofla uh, the, the nocticula uh, you know it is also i told you it is a bioluminescent uh, you know so it's very very important right uh, bioluminescence that you can see it uh, in, on the coastal region especially during the season right this is a, this is an image from life of pi uh, famous hollywood movie and that has also featured this uh, bioluminescence and some are important fish pathogen like fisteria uh, you know fish pathogen others live symbiotically with coral like zooxanthellae in the symbiodinium so symbiodinium is a dinoflagellate usually it's called zooxanthellae but the, the genus is symbiodinium which is the reason why the coral reefs are existing you know so without symbiodinium coral reef cannot exist you see that is uh, why uh, these are really important symbiodinium especially are really really prone for uh, you know the uh, ocean acidification so that has got repercussions on its survival so apicomplexins are the next group of organism that has a, uh, that are parasites of the animals and some cause serious human disease and apicomplex is so named because the, the apex uh, consists of a complex organelle you know so the 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 the, uh, the reason or the function of this complex organelle uh, is simple penetrating the host cell so that is why apic complexes are very well known uh, pathogenic organism especially for the human pathogens they also have non photosynthetic plastid apicoplast so uh, apical complex you can see that polar ring conoid uh, micronemes and uh, uh, rop tree all these are specialized for penetrating the host cell you know that is the apic complex so some example is uh, you know of course plasmodium and toxoplasma both are uh, you know highly pathogenic right so most apicomplexins have intricate life cycle with both sexual and asexual stages that often requires two or more different host species for completion for example in the case of plasmodium it need a mosquito in the case of toxoplasma very excitingly toxoplasma not many people know about toxoplasma it needs cats you know cat is a definitive host in the case of toxoplasma so if you are a cat lover or if you ever had a cat in your life like me i am a cat lover so chances are high that toxoplasma is present in your uh, blood you know if you take a, a, a test for the toxoplasma you can see that you can detect the toxoplasma in your blood it has got ramifications on cognitive response time it can even lead you to traffic accidents you know 
read this article extraordinary tales which i published a few years back uh, this is linked up in the uh, in the course website please have a look extraordinary tales parasites hijacking minds of the host how the parasites can hijack the minds of the hosts